Hello and welcome to this iMesh video and today I'm going to be talking about beveling and I'm bringing this video up because in the past I've had a few people comment on my YouTube videos or on my models to say when I make a model why do I keep adding extra loop cuts unnecessarily to my bevels because I could just use auto smooth or weighted normals for example and I personally have a preference for adding loop cuts and I'm going to do a video showing you why and then I thought I might as well might as well show you some other methods to beveling as well. And you might prefer one type of beveling to another, and I might prefer another method. Um, but beveling, there are many different ways to do a bevel, so I thought that I'm just going to cover a, a brief overview of a few different methods, and you can then try them out. Of course, there's going to be more complicated methods for more complex shapes, but I'm just going to do this on a basic cube, just to give you a brief overview. Okay, so what am I talking about when I'm saying adding extra loop cuts to my bevels? So if I do control B and just very, make a very quick bevel like this and do shade smooth, you'll see that there is some strange shading going on here. It's almost as if the edge is, this edge is round, but it's not. So what you can do is you go into here, control R and do control B, and then you can clean this edge up like this. And you can see that now the gradient is just going this way. So we could just add another, another one here and clean this edge up as well. So now this edge is totally smooth and that is the method which I always use. And people have said that that is wrong and they say that it's just adding unnecessary faces, which in some cases it can, but in this case I've just added an additional 18, which is not too many, uh, but I do understand their point, especially for game models, it's not necessarily important. So I'm gonna talk you through why I prefer this method and some other methods available. Okay, so what are the different beveling methods? So this is just the default cube. And if you just want a really quick and dirty way to add some beveling, I mean, it's not actually dirty, but what you can do is just go and add a bevel node. And what this node does is if I go to slot four, you can see that it's now beveled all the edges and it's actually really quick and it's actually really powerful. So you can add any object, add a bevel node and you'll instantly looks like you've got a beveling and it does a really good job. Um, it looks pretty natural, except there are some problems here. So if I zoom in, and you can see that the edge is completely sharp because it's not actually changing the geometry, but it's just trying to fake it. And also if you go to the middle, so I'm not too sure why my screen is going so slow, but bear with me. Uh, there's also a very sharp edge going down here, which wouldn't be there normally. And there's also um, at the backside of objects, there is a gradient going along here and along here. Whereas normally if there's a real geometry bevel, the edge would fall away behind the object. So there wouldn't be any gradient. And I can show you that with slot three. So this is using an actual bevel modifier. So if I show you this one here, it's just this object with a bevel. And this one, you can see that the edge is falling away and there is no gradient that you get with the bevel node. Also, the bevel node is a little bit slower at rendering. Um, I know that I have actually added um, quite a lot of samples here. I think it's default at eight, but you have to just bear in mind that it might actually slow down your render time. What's going on here? Okay, anyway, so this is, uh, this is with the actual geometry and this one is with the bevel node. So you can see how powerful the bevel node can be just for a really, really quick and simple bevel. This, I think it's really good for objects which are a bit further away from the camera and you just wanna take the, take the edge off. And this one here is with the bevel modifier. And you can see that the edge is a lot more smoother and it looks a lot more natural than it would be normally. And this one is actually using the bevel modifier, but with a flat shading. So if you actually zoom in, you can see that this isn't actually smooth. This is actually um, with lines, but if the object is further away from the camera, it does actually look smooth. And you can add more edges here. And then if we render this, side, this one again, you'll then be able to see that it still looks smoother, but if you get closer and closer, you can still see that this is sharp edges. But like I said, this one also looks fine further away from the camera and no one, no one will ever know. But if there is an object where you do want to get a little bit closer, you do want to actually add some smooth shading. So if we add some smooth shading, that is when we start hitting these problems. So you can see here again that there are now, there's an edge which looks like it is, let me just turn these off. It looks like there is a gradient on this face, which isn't ideal, uh, but the actual bevel itself does look smooth. So how do you fix these here? And there are several different methods. So there is one way uh, where you can go to geometry, sorry, shading and do harden normals. And then what you can go is go to here and go to normals and click auto smooth. And then that will then work. If you turn this one off, you might still get an issue because the auto smooth goes by angle. So actually, let me just go in here. And if I go down, you can see, you can start to see that where the auto smooth is affecting. And for certain objects, you will still need to add 
harder than normals to make sure that the edges look completely smooth. And you might be thinking, well, that looks perfect. Everything is smooth and the edges are still sharp. So why do I still add extra edge loops um, instead of clicking auto smooth? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a practical example of why I don't use uh, these settings here and I just add edge loops and I've made the bevel a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit easier. So this one here is just a cube and what I've got is a bevel and I've clicked hard on normals with um, auto smooth. And if you don't have a bevel and what you've done instead is just uh, actually added bevel with a geometry or you've already applied this, what you can do is also use the weighted normals. If I turn off hard and normals and let's say we've just applied this whatever and we click this button it then does a similar thing so it's found a face and it's hardened the edges on this particular face and that still looks fine so this is how the render turns out i'm not sure why my viewport is going so slow in here but anyway you can see that this looks super smooth and everything kind of looks fine so i'm going to show you why i add extra edge loops so as you saw in the beginning of the video what i did was actually i i just added a a bevel oh let me just remove this one i just added a bevel and then what i did was just clean up the edge like this and there is actually a way to do this with just the bevel node well it's actually with two bevel nodes so i'm going to show you how i'll do that here so this is with the bevel and if i click this turn this one off what you see here is actually if i show with wireframe this is with just with a bevel but what i've done is i've set the shape to one so you can see it does this so i've basically with this i've basically made a cube if i add uh, add a cube and what i've done is essentially done this so i've done this and go down like that sorry my viewport is going incredibly slow I'm not entirely sure why probably my graphics card again having some issues <laughs> uh, so i've basically done this uh, just with one bevel node and that is essentially cleaning up the edges for me ready for when i add a bevel so imagine i've just basically done it backwards so now we also already have these supporting edges and that is what we are doing here so now that i have these edges which are already there to clean up i'm going to add a second bevel which goes in the middle and then that cleans up that so i've I basically have the same thing just just with bevel nodes and what I've got here if you want to see how it's set up I've got this one which is this one here and then this one which goes in the middle and what I found best is that if if these edges kind of fit uh, like they're kind of the similar size because you could do this but then that still looks a bit strange because these edges they need to be quite close to where the bevel starts so if I go like this so that's kind of even sizes and then that should be fine. And then I basically hit render. Okay, and this here is the uh, bevel with the supporting edge. So you can see here that the, the edge is completely smooth and there is no kind of sharp edges. And if I compare that against the cube with the auto smooth, the, the result is gonna be very subtle. But you can see here that the edge, there is a definite sharp edge that goes, basically goes along all of these faces here, all of these edges. Uh, when I compare it against number one, this edge is much smoother i mean the subtle the, the effect is very subtle but there is definitely an effect going on here and there were times where i might make an object or i might be working on a scene and i have for example a worktop yeah you know, like on a kitchen and i'm doing a close-up of some some food on the worktop and there is a there is an edge that we can see and i have used auto smooth but i just i just didn't like this effect i didn't like why there was such a sharp edge running running along a bevel because it should be completely smooth um so then i ended up just using um, the method with an extra loop cut for to support the edge and i ended up just using that method more and more and more and now that became my automatic go-to way to add a bevel and now that i now have this uh, technique of just adding a double bevel it then makes it a lot more um, easier to work on the object as well because then because always the problem was with adding edge loops is that you also end up with too many edges but now that the object now has um, a double bevel i can then adjust the object later on a lot more easier and you might think that it's really not worth the hassle to add, add an extra bevel when you could just add auto smooth and that's that's fair i mean i don't see any problem with using this i think for most situations it actually looks perfectly fine but I hope that you also understand the reasoning why I would personally prefer this one. So yeah, that is the methods which I wanted to talk about today. If you want to see any other methods or if you have more methods that you want to talk about, then please write in the comments. Um, I just didn't want to go over all of them in this video, but 
yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I will speak, see you, talk to you, talk at you uh, soon. Oh, uh, I would also recommend a, a like and subscribe. Uh, that would be that would be nice, I guess, because um, we all, we're at five and a half thousand now. So, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Just uh, if you like it, then like the 